So one of the important things about ecosystem accounts is that it requires ecologists, statisticians, accountants, uh, carbon specialists, water specialists, hydrologists, others to work together to produce these kinds of multidisciplinary reports and it, it really gives us an insight into how the whole system works, not only economically and environmentally but socially as well. So the report uses the um, system of environmental economic accounting which is an international standard developed by the UN, World Bank, IMF, OECD. Uh, and what that means is that it's all standard, uh, we define things very clearly and we follow certain rules so we don't double count anything. So in that way we define the uh, forest industry exactly the same way as the ABS does so that we can compare it with all of the statistics from the ABS and then we can also compare things internationally. Uh, so it's, it's a very powerful thing. Uh, you know, there are different ways of defining different industries. So for the forest industry, it is the amount of wood which is taken out and then transported away. You can then look at, you know, things going on downstream, but if we did it for wood, we'd have to do it for water, for agriculture and tourism as well. But this way, by doing it the standard way, we ensure that there is no double counting and that it is directly comparable with other information. Our study of environmental economic accounting was in the Central Highlands region. It's an area of tall wet forests and farmland just to the northeast of Melbourne. Here, the economic contribution of agricultural production, water supply and tourism was far greater than that for native timber production. However, it's the harvesting of native forests that reduces the ecosystem services for many of the other activities by creating younger, even-aged stands of trees that are less diverse. And these regrowth forests reduce the water inflows to the reservoirs, they reduce carbon stocks in younger trees, they reduce the scenic amenity for tourism and reduce the habitat condition for biodiversity. So present, in the accounts, presenting information as the costs and benefits allowed us to analyse these trade-offs between different land uses. The loss of $12 million by ceasing harvesting of native forests could be exceeded by the increasing value of water supply and carbon storage. There would also be an increase in the habitat condition for biodiversity and tourism and plantation timber production would also likely increase. The ecosystem accounts that have been done for the Central Highlands are really, really insightful for some of the key trade-offs that are being made in the system. One of those key trade-offs is water versus timber. So these catchments, which are about one and a half hours from the centre of Melbourne, produce almost all of the water for the city of Melbourne five million people and a city that's rapidly growing. Other studies have indicated that Melbourne is going to start to run into serious water issues within the next 10 years. So we need to think about the long-term integrity of the water catchments that provide water for Melbourne. What we know is that the, the value added value of the water from these water catchments is about $310 million per year from this ecosystem accounts process. We know that that's about 25 and a half times more than the value added value of the timber that comes from these same areas, about $12 million per year. The accounting framework is, is very good, very powerful. You can look at many of the interactions. Uh, you can then look at the values as well as the flows. Uh, so one of the things, Vic Forests has the forest on their balance sheet for it's about $50 million, it goes up and down a bit, but you know, would somebody buy it from them? Is it for sale? Uh, it's certainly being used to generate money from uh, timber harvesting, but maybe it could be used for other purposes. Will someone stump the money and buy that? That would be an interesting thing. 
But the other thing is you can look at the products that are being used. So the timber industry supplies the biggest user of the, the wood from the native forest is the pulp and paper mill. There are actually alternative inputs for that. They could be replaced from uh, uh, plantation timber or from recycled pulp. So you can look at the replacements. You compare that to something like water, well there's no real replacement for things like water. Maybe you can put in more water efficient devices and other things, but you cannot really replace the water which comes to Melbourne. We mapped the uh, areas of greatest conflict between these different land use activities in the areas where harvesting of native timber is available and we found that um, the locations where these greatest conflicts occur, this is where decisions need to be made about the relative values and the impacts of these different land uses. The mountain ash forest is one of the most carbon dense forests in the world. And so protecting and enhancing these carbon stocks is important for reducing emissions. However, government regulations currently exclude native forests from the carbon market. The key issue here is that the more we log these catchments, the less water that we get. The less water that we get, the more we have to rely on other sources, very expensive sources such as desal plants. So the key issue here is that if we want to secure the future of Melbourne and the people of Melbourne and their water supply, then we really need to think about what we are doing in terms of how we manage these catchments. Therefore, we need to actually start removing logging from these areas to guarantee the integrity of the water catchments, the water supply that comes from these areas and the security of Melbourne and Melbourne's population.